We just had Michael McCauley on the podcast um, for the first podcast, and we finally come up with a name um, at, the st- at the intro for the podcast. I still hadn't really figured out what we were going to call it, so I'm calling it What Am I Doing? And still not quite sure what I am doing, um, but the podcast is hopefully going to help me figure out this comedy uh, stick and help me along the way. And the, the, the chat with Michael was interesting. Um, he is someone who I found out won an award at the Edinburgh Fringe show something like 20 years ago. And then that was kind of him done for comedy for 20 years and he's back in the game now. And it's just interesting as I'm kind of starting out to talk to someone who, you know, definitely has, has achieved something I would have dream to do is like win an award at the fringe show and he's like oh no that's that's me done for now but it's pulled them back in after all those years um ah we, we chat a couple about, about how, how we came up with the show and and um, his his amazing publicist um so i hope you enjoy it um just a bit of admin if you want to follow up with the podcast and um, i'll be posting everything on my facebook page so at the moment that's sbg comedy and as well, it'll be going live on YouTube at SBG Comedy. Um, I'll have links um, in the description on, on YouTube and also my, my Facebook page. But look, um, I hope you enjoy the first episode of What Am I Doing? Good luck. Thanks very much, mate. Well, <laughs> uh, cheers, Shannon. My name is Michael McCauley. I'm very pleased to be here. I'm very nice to be uh, being able to have a chat, uh, especially as it appears to be chatting all about myself which is a very easy topic of conversation for me to, to try and remember. You probably so don't I'm even looking need forward me here. Oh, I could, I could probably do a three-hour monologue, mate. Ask, <laughs> ask Kathleen, she'll tell you. Yeah. So, like, okay, so this is the inaugural podcast. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. I think I'm going <laughs> to figure that out as it goes along. It may look professional in here, but there's very little professionalism going on right now. Um, the, ho- the whole product is, is, let's see what happens, basically. Um, so... The reason I got you here and the story I'd like us to go over, and, and I think it's a good place to start, um, is your your Edinburgh show. Yeah. From So when, when was that? So we decided to take the plunge, and we'd had a few proto shows that we were going to do in the late 90s. And for various reasons, principally complete laziness, we just hadn't done it. And then eventually, it looked like it was the point where, in a bit like in a Judd Apatow movie, we were going to have to start settling down or do something. So it was like the last stand where we thought, we've got a bit of a window this summer. Yeah. So it was we decided to do it in 2000, but planning it to do it in 2001. So we did it in uh, the Edinburgh Festival of 2001. Okay. And it, the whole thing must have took about eight months to plan. Eight months to plan. Yeah. And w- when you were building the show, like, did you build the show in, like, small sets? Building up yeah. the Edinburgh show, or how how did it how did it work? So what what <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> or how did it not work? Well, what happened was we we built, uh, we were doing like little warm up things, and we were doing maybe five five minutes at a time because you got to be realistic. Yeah. We so just to explain, we decided to do this. My friend and I, Chris Newman, we did it as a double act because our ambition when we were little kids was to be like working men's club comics. But we <laughs> didn't want to do like racist or sexist material because yeah. this was, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, that wasn't the right thing and it, it still isn't. But we wanted to be have that kind of shabby, faded glamour of club comics, but we would never do anything in the clubs because we'd get physically attacked and thrown okay. out. So we wouldn't do that. So that was the basic idea. So we always thought we'll do a double act. And so we kind of built it up piece by piece. And so there was like segments here, segments there. We used to do... We'd start off, and our first thought is we've got to do something just to make sure everyone knows what we're doing and who we are. Yeah. So we just did a few one-liners okay. that, we, that we made up. Yeah. And I subsequently saw, weirdly enough, about two years after the first time I saw Peter K, he did the exact same thing. I was saying, oh, yeah, great tactic, Peter. Although, <laughs> to be fair, he didn't make his jokes up. He just like did famous jokes, but he did them a million times better than us, obviously. Okay, so, so we did that. This is a bit off topic. P- Peter K, uh, uh, he became, like, he was huge. Yeah, he was massive, yeah. Huge in the UK. Still is. Still is. I, I've never seen anything he really... D- I know he had a TV show. Oh, Pete. Well, he did. So, Peter Kay. So, 
some people absolutely love him. Some people think he's all right. I d- yeah. I think he's funny, but I, like, I don't rave over him. But I appreciate that he's brilliant. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. My my wife Kathleen and all her family just cry and cry and cry with laughter at his stand up because he does everything about living in the north. Uh, and so everything he describes is basically our lives. You know what I mean? He he was to me. He was like the comic that the general public love. Like yeah, he does. Yeah, if you everyone loves him. Like he's like like a Michael McIntyre. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like. You don't have to be into comedy to know who he is. They just go... Huge star. That's what a comedian is. Huge popular yeah, appeal. Yeah. Huge star. And he's really good. But the funny thing about Peter Kay that I always did really like about him was before I even realised he did stand-up and before he did Phoenix Nights. I don't know if you used to watch Phoenix oh Nights on Channel it. 4. Phoenix Nights, yeah. But yeah, he yeah. used to have this special... like It was just called... I think it was just called The Peter Kay Show. And it was before Phoenix Nights. And it was six half-hour episodes. And it was like a different character every time. And the character that he did... He actually did one of the Phoenix Knights characters. The the guy, the the manager, I forget his name, is one of the show, and that became obviously the platform for Phoenix Knights. Okay. And so the thing about Peter Kay, which is something that I admire completely and have uh, no capacity to do whatsoever, is he's also a brilliant actor. You know what I mean? He's not just yeah. a good stand-up. He's actually yeah. a brilliant performer yeah. and a brilliant yeah. actor. Yeah. And he's amazing at it. And but it was this initial show which I don't think that many people ever latched onto. That first show, like just his half hours. Was absolutely amazing. It was amazing, really brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It, he d- just now that we're talking about like actors who c- comedians who had like acting chops, like Ricky Gervais. Yeah, he he came up as a stand-up comic, wasn't he? Or was he an actor who was who was a comedic actor? Well, I, I can I can never quite cal- uh, tell because as far as I'm aware, he, he was a pop star, wasn't he? Which didn't go very far outside of. I think it was Indonesia. He was quite big in Indonesia in the oh mid nineties. Ta- no, I'm not, 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 not. Did I say yeah. Ricky Gervais? Yeah, off no. the office. No, no, I'm not oh talking sorry about him. Ah, oh, what's his name? Uh, Northern comic, as well. Um, is his name he's fat dude? Really funny. That's not narrowing it down. That's really. not really narrowing <laughs> it down. No, fuck. <laughs> ah. Um. Ricky. It's definitely Ricky. Not the bloke with the royal family, Ricky Tomlinson. No, no, no. I'm gonna no, say because no, he's no. definitely an actor. No, or is it even Ricky? Um, this is good. What's he been in? Uh, can't remember now. <laughs> oh, he was in those ads, the car ads with the the monkey. The, the oh, Johnny Vegas. Johnny Vegas. Johnny Fucking Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny you. Vegas. Uh, yeah, well, no, John, Johnny Vegas, mate. Everyone thought he was a just a normal stand-up, but he was more like a performance artist. Yeah, yeah. With his, he used to do his pottery things. And then he used to, p- he did, he, w- w- he was, he used to, d- he had a really, he, he won a penny, I think, I can't remember, like 98, 99. And he would do pottery on stage and do stand-up at the same time. But then he'd do weird things like he'd feign having a breakdown and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing. He's yeah. A- and but, but he is, again, another brilliantly talented actor. He, he's yeah, great. He, he's, he's, you see him on the, 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 like the comedy chat shows, like yeah. the 9 out of 10 cast or whatever, and he will... Bring the house. Yeah, down. he's he's brilliant, mate. And he'll have one of those breakdowns, or he just you never you, you don't know. I o- I always find it weird uh, when you when you talk about stuff on stage, and some people come up to you and be like, oh, "I didn't know where to laugh at that," you know, because you're yeah. talking about serious stuff, or y- you know, but you're, you're you're having fun. And with him, sometimes he to me he blurs the line between is he having a breakdown, <laughs> oh. or is. I, is it just uh, performance, mate? Hundred percent. So one of one of my mates, uh, his his wife was a massive fan, and she'd always want to see him. And so he got him a ticket to go and see him. And this must have been in about I think two thousand four, five ish, give or take. So he was mainly doing career on like TV at this point. Yeah, dead successful. But this tour he was doing was one of these ones where he went even more bananas than normal. And she came out in floods of tears, worried about his mental health, <laughs> and she just thought. <laughs> <laughs> and it only turned out, like, w- way, way later, she'd realised it was the act. It was the act, but okay. But it just okay. hadn't been to her comic sensibility. He, he mastered that, though. Oh, like he was he brilliant he at it, yeah, unbelievable apparently. Unbelievable at it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's... Okay, okay, yeah, that's... That's, 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 that's uh, At least I remember his name now, Johnny Vegas. Like yeah. He's, yeah. He, he, he had a couple of really weird shows on, like, BBC Three. Oh, yeah, he's got he's got loads he's of them. Loads one of where he was a drug dealer and all sorts yeah, of things. That one, yeah, yeah, that was... R- that was that w- yeah, that was super strange. Um, But the BBC Three had an awful lot of that like they would give a lot of like comedians and artists chances that oh, you they would. would normally see um uh yeah, yeah so I, I used to hear a lot of british comics like praising the bbc3 but mate, e- even now things like radio 4 the amount of people who've grown up and actually started off before they got a tv break to do radio 4 
and they write jokes and they do sketches and then they yeah. progress and progress and progress. It's like just a it's absolute roll call. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay, the fringe show. Yeah. Let's get back to Oh that. yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> So we we were doing this thing piece by piece and uh we realized soon that we were gonna struggle <laughs> to to get a lot of material. So obviously we thought club comics, what's the next thing you do? Ah, variety act. So <laughs> we ended up getting a magician. <laughs> We did, uh, who dressed in monk's robes oh and God. called himself the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good because he gave us a little break. Yeah. And he and he actually had a tangible skill. like So he could actually do magic. Okay. You know what I mean? In, okay. a, in a way that we couldn't necessarily do comedy. R- so right. there was a nice counterpoint when everyone was going, what the hell is going on? Everyone looked baffled. When this magician would come out with like a big dramatic entrance. Yeah. I'm the prophet and all yeah. this kind of thing. And then anybody do a real trick. So everyone <laughs> would sort of go, oh, this is a genuine piece of entertainment. And yeah, all right, we can relax. Right. And then, then we had a guy who was ostensibly there to be our publicist. But we soon discovered within maybe hours of being there that publicity was not his forte. <laughs> so he ended up doing a monologue uh, at <laughs> half time. Because we needed to get changed into kimonos for the second half of the show. Oh we, God. we wore kimonos for the second half of the show. Right. That we hadn't planned on doing, we literally, the day, the true story, the opening day of the show, we were walking down uh, Grass Market, yeah. and Nicholson's, one of the beautiful second-hand shops, is still there, uh, dead famous in Edinburgh, and uh, we saw these silk kimonos, we just thought, we'll have them. Yeah, we'll have them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just looked, it was too, <laughs> and they, w- like, they weren't quite matching, but yeah. they kind of looked matching. Yeah. It was too yeah. good to be true. Yeah, and it was absolutely nothing to do with the show. No, we never explained <laughs> it, ever, at yeah. all. Yeah. We just reappeared in kimonos, didn't make, it, didn't make a joke about it or a reference to it. Just wore our kimonos. So it was a, 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 an hour-long show, yeah? Uh, well, it's about 50 minutes, yeah. About 50 minutes. Yeah, so yeah. you have a wardrobe change, you have a magician, and you have your publicist doing a monologue. Exactly, yeah. Wow. That's well, we, it's cause we were struggling, mate. I mean, <laughs> we were really struggling. <laughs> so <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention, well isn't it? I could do a couple of those next time I need to fill for time on stage. Well, <laughs> w- it, it ta- it, it w- interestingly, it, ta- it, did, it helped you do a little bit about structure. So the second half of the show, which always, always, always apart from the one crazy night where just everything was the biggest disaster imaginable. Yeah. Uh, it always built on the first half of the show, so there was a load of callbacks, and okay. like the, the very final gags referred back to two or three ones that were staircased in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, there was a little bit of intelligence to it. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, the intelligence is only as good as the joke that's behind it, isn't it? So yeah, it people yeah. can go, oh, I appreciate the structure of that, yeah. but it's still not it's funny. It's still not funny. Yeah, yeah. no one's going no yeah. to like that either. I think uh, I think we should probably mention what your show was about. <laughs> well, so <laughs> the show it was uh, it was you know the uh, a flight of fancy through the imagination of the rich and famous is what it was about. We called it under laboratory conditions yeah. after the old Paul Daniels segment because yeah. we n- we hated Paul Daniels. <laughs> So we thought that would be a good place to start. Isn't he the, the old magician? He's the magician, the and he's from Middlesbrough. <laughs> he's all like me, funnily <laughs> enough. And a big Tory voter, too. We never liked Paul Daniels. Although now, as, as he, after he died a few years ago, and I, in my older years, I began to appreciate, actually, he was all right. Yeah. But when we were growing up, he wasn't like a, a, a particularly cool book. Anyway, we just thought it was really funny to <laughs> name check. But, of course, not one single person understood the reference. Uh, because we, we didn't explain that either. Yeah, okay. okay. So well, I, I didn't... I didn't I didn't well, you wouldn't. Idea. It's yeah. it's pretty obscure. It's niche. It's right? ni- yeah. Even Paul Daniels fans probably wouldn't have recognised it. Wouldn't recognised it. it. And but what was interesting about it was was we pioneered, at least I think we pioneered, uh, an age certificate, age restriction at the show. We because th- it's common now, but it wasn't, believe it or not, common back then. Oh. And so we had to put it because obviously there's a it's adult material occasionally. Yeah, yeah. So we had to put it for over s- over sixteens. I think we had it. But because it was called under laboratory conditions and we had this really jaunty tagline about what it was about, which bore no <laughs> resemblance to what the show <laughs> actually was, people would bring the kids to think there's two wacky scientists. Oh, God. So every night, I mean, there wasn't like queues of people turned yeah. away or anything, but every night yeah. there was at least a couple of families who had to go, no, sorry, no, this sorry, is actually a really, a really degrading show about people who would probably sue us if they were alive. <laughs> so please don't attend. And that's that, that w- so that we, we learned a valuable lesson there. It's all very well having a surreal title, yeah. but it can just confuse it an audience. Confuse it. Well, yeah. you got people in. Think of that when you think of this podcast, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> call it on, that's what I call it, yeah. under lo- laboratory conditions. Yeah. Two, under laboratory conditions, <laughs> two. two. Don't explain <laughs> what the <laughs> sequel bit is. Just don't understand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you were, <laughs> so what is your, was you dissecting the death of Michael Barrymore? No, no, well, that, that was part of it. So what, okay. the sh- what the show was, was basically the thing that, me and my mate have always found funny, to this day, we still text each other, is obscure references 
to famous or used to be famous people. And I don't know why I find it funny. <laughs> not, not in a way to be cruel to them, not in a yeah, mocking way. Yeah. But just, I think the very fact that you can make a joke about these people is just what makes me laugh out loud. So to give you an example, just last week, we had a text conversation about the 1970s minor horror film actress Karen Black. And just the fact that we could is still, in fact, it's making me laugh thinking about it now. There's nothing intrinsically funny about it, but just the, the fact that we could do it. So a lot of our gags uh, was a lot of pop culture references. So if someone overseas turned up, they, they couldn't understand us. Okay, okay. And, uh, and truthfully, a lot of our pop culture references were obscure even for a British audience. Oh, God. So I don't I know if you've ever heard of the 1960s, early 1960s pop star Billy Fury. Uh. We had a, he had a song out in like 1961 <laughs> called Halfway to Paradise. <laughs> and our joke was he came back through with when one of us was being a clairvoyant. <laughs> and his spirit came through to say that he was still in purgatory <laughs> halfway <laughs> to paradise. <laughs> which we thought was both theologically sound yeah. and, uh, and hilarious. Yeah. But of course that one tended to get blank looks because no one knows who Billy no Fury is. Yeah. 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 But uh, uh, the other ones were alright. So we did some more mod ones. We, we did Savile jokes long before... Uh, he was out there. I that's I true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and we were on the right side of tastefulness for that. But what one of the big news events of the day was it was the tragic murder of uh, Stuart Lubbock at Michael Barrymore's house. Now, again, just let me presage this. Oh, sorry, that we was it. Yeah. So we weren't taking the mick out of him or that. We, you know, that's we're, yeah. not, we're not trying to be cruel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we did make reference to these kind of things uh, when we did our segment of Through the Keyhole. <laughs> and so we <laughs> basically described describe the crime scene which <laughs> now I say it out loud does sound cruel but it wasn't it wasn't intended to be I suppose you had to be the be there and wearing a kimono and probably people could we pick were up that it wasn't cruel we were in the kimonos at the time <laughs> and it was just after we'd done 10 minutes about Tony Hart having sex with Morph and that's God. why that's why he was so plastic uh, made out of plasticine because he was pliable <laughs> we did a, we did a lot of Tony Hart jokes <laughs> which looking back there might have been cruel as well but I don't think there's a gen we've never heard of it I don't think there is a, like a, a known plasticine fetish so I think I'm sure there is now. Well, th there, there might be, yeah, but yeah. Uh, we. I didn't want to Google it. I, I don't yeah, want to Google I, it. Now. Probably, probably safer not to. Yeah. Probably safer not to. So basically, it was all uh, not all, but primarily references to celebrities and minor celebrities with comic twists. Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, and we just basically thought it was hilarious, but not everyone did. Well, a lot of people did because you won the. The, the Bex Award. We did, we did, we did. Although, look, let's be brutally honest about this. This was all luck and no judgment whatsoever. And I'm, I don't even try and argue with me on this point. So that how that came about, I'm still not entirely sure. So obviously in Edinburgh they have, I don't know what it's called now, forgive me, but it was at the time still the Perrier Award. Yeah. And that was the big comedy award. That yeah. was for the professionals and everything else. And the guys who won it that year was uh, the guy who did Garth Marenghi's Dark Place with Richard Iodi. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Matt Berry and all those. Yeah. I forget his name. He's a, he's a brilliant oh guy. Yeah, we, we, we forgot. Uh, hold on. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's yeah. do so. I should know. But, but he, so he won the Perrier that year. So obviously we're not talking anything major like that. But for all the kind of the, the proper fringe acts, uh, that y for, for whatever reason, that year was sponsored by the, the beer Bex. Yeah. And this was the very early days of online voting and online judging and all that kind of thing. And wha whatever it was... Matthew Holmes. Matthew Holmes, of course. Matthew forgive Holmes. me. Yeah, Matthew Holmes. He's brilliant. He just directed an amazing horror film last year. He's, he's a really talented guy. But uh, so what it was, was we, we, we got to Edinburgh. We were doing this thing. And about two or three days in, <laughs> someone said, did you know y you're, like, you're doing really well on this Bex beer thing? And we went, no, what's that? And we assumed at this point that our publicist had rigged it. <laughs> and then we realized he was too... He, he just didn't have, he didn't have the... He just didn't have the gumption to do yeah, it. No, he, yeah, he didn't have, he yeah. didn't have the, uh, so, okay, the I'm enthusiasm. I'm interested to go, okay, we're doing it. We're doing the Fringe Festival, okay? We've yeah. got our material together. We've got our magician. We've got our kimonos. And you have a publicist. Yeah. And you go, well, he, like, did you, was he your mate? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Oh, he's, still, he's, still a, he's still a really good mate of ours. He's yeah. a lovely man. And he's turned into a very hard-working and... and uh, you know, a sensible man about town. He works in London. He's a lovely fella. Yeah, not Call a publicist. Call though. Oh, he's not. No. <laughs> no, he was never going to be a publicist. And we, we even we even went to uh, we went to all the trouble of we got our mate to design a, a fantastic looking poster, really good poster. Yeah. And we got a load of posters printed out and a load of flyers, and we sent him on his merry way. And within five minutes, we knew we'd made a, a bit of a mistake when he went. What he, what he 
he went. He, he thought he was going to the Scotsman newspaper. Yeah. And he got there, said, "Oh, we've got a great act. I want to give you some materials. Invite the critics over." And the woman behind the desk went, "We're a hotel, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we, we haven't been in the Scotsman newspaper for ten years." <laughs> and he was like, "Ah." Oh. So uh, that that was his research. Okay. Done. Okay. And okay. and to my knowledge, strong start. Yeah. To to my knowledge, he never once put up a single poster. And to my knowledge, he gave maybe three flyers away. One of which we definitely know he gave to a very old homeless man who I still hope is wandering the streets of Edinburgh thinking he's got a voucher for something that okay. he can cash in. Okay. And that was about it. And then apart from that, he just kind of had a few beers and just relaxed. Okay. He was yeah. a publicist in there. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, what I imagine a publicist would be nowadays. He was great. I mean, don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. And, you know, we, we, we appreciated his monologue as well. That got us. It got his kimono time, didn't it? I suppose. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, did, you, did you have a break in the shot? Like, was it just like a full hour? Or oh, yeah, no. So no, we d we did the whole thing back to back. Okay. But that and that's another reason why we broke it up. And and the reason for that was absolutely tactical because if the first half goes wrong, you don't hear the footsteps out while you're putting the kimono on. Right. Whereas basically, you know, if it's going all the way through, yeah, uh, it's it's more likely to to keep it even just out of you know bare politeness. Yeah. Although again, like truthfully. That wasn't a problem, apart from maybe you know one bad occasion. But, yeah. but there's reasons behind that. Uh, I, I suppose another thing that might be interesting is just the mechanics of the venue. We were really, I'd say, fortunate, but we did a lot of research on this. Yeah. So the main, uh, it, it's a lot. It's a lot more kind of professionalized even now than it was then, and it was a lot more professionalized then than like back in the eighties and nineties, obviously. Yeah. So the the main kind of famous comedy venues, the Gilded Balloon, Underbelly, Pleasance, all that kind yeah, of thing. They're, 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 they're pretty much block booked out mm. for the big acts and the up and coming acts who are going to yes, get they're professional they're comedy. I know, you have to pay for them. To oh, you have to, you have to pay for everything okay. anyway. Yeah. Th there is a free fringe now, but there wasn't a free fringe oh when okay. I was there. Okay. So we, we had to pay for our venue. But the good thing is, of course, because you know, you're just talking about thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Mm. If you play your cards right, you know, you can get a reasonable number of people in, even if they don't know who you are. So our tactics were we wanted somewhere that was central, so you could just basically drip up, whip up a crowd outside. Obviously, we needed somewhere cheap, and we needed somewhere that looked at least a little bit professional, and we just completely looked out. Yeah. There's a place called Riddles Court, which is on the very near Edinburgh Castle, yeah. on the top of the Royal Mile. And it opens up in the festival, and it has like a big 80-seater room and a smaller 40-seater room upstairs. So we got the 40-seater room, because we thought yeah. we don't want to be too crazy with it. And I think it cost us something like... Uh, it was 500 quid or something for the room, which is a decent chunk of change, but not impossible to, 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 to get, you know what I mean? And how long was your run? Oh, we just did a week. We just did a week? Yeah, okay. yeah, we just did yeah. a week. Uh, we, I d we didn't think we'd have the stamina to do more, and we probably wouldn't have, so... Well, I, I, I was um, talking to Gary Sandrum, who is a Scottish comic who's over yeah. here at the moment, and um, he did, a, he did a, an hour talk on Neil's comedy school. Yes, and it, uh, were you on with that one? No, I, I meant to, I meant to join in, and sadly I missed it. They did one on the the Edinburgh Fringe, and um, I think now it's like if you ha if you're going to be included for any awards, your show has to be an hour yeah. or over forty five minutes, and you have to do like the four week run. You can't you can't w you're not up for any award yeah. unless you're in for uh, or in for the f and total months. And that's fair enough, I think, Rick. Yeah. And and, and let let me stress, I mean, we we didn't go in as competitors in any no, yeah, no yeah, we, yeah. we didn't we didn't know we were doing it we yeah. didn't think we were doing it it was just the look of the draw that year that yeah. was this and it might have been the year before as well but we'd never heard of it ourselves yeah uh but lo and, lo and behold we did seem to win it but uh, uh, it goes to show you that like when you have people out looking to, to give awards and like if you if someone walks into your show that you can you can get it like yeah Luckily enough, um, and just what you say, it's luck. But people might have come in on one of the the really good the nights because really we did yeah. like w it was it was a weird one. We started strong. We had a proper little lull in the middle, and then an absolute disastrous plunge off the cliff on the Thursday, uh, where I got we got horrific horrific reviews oh online. Yeah. Really, this was before trolling was even a thing. But <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> and they were right. You know, we were disastrous that night. So I'm not arguing. But then the last couple of nights, I don't know what went wrong or what went right, but it just, it was brilliant, man. It was great. I suppose once you've hit rock bottom, you're like, fuck it. Yeah, I think that was it. And and there was, so the, the Thursday was so bad, obviously I just, I didn't even want to go out on the Friday. And I was like, oh, can we just sack it off? And I thought, we can't sack it off, can we? And then we didn't. And I'm glad we didn't. So what, went, what well. went wrong? Well, it was just all sorts of things. We'd had a few too many scoops <laughs> before the show. I'm not going to lie. 
So that's a disaster. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not like we were on stage drunk or anything, but just your timing's off. You know what I mean? Off, yeah. And you know what it's like, mate. If the first few things don't go quite according to plan, it can unsettle you. And then if you d- if the rest of it, cont- you just you everything just goes. It all builds. Off. It all builds. And Once one or two things are off. Yeah. It, the crowd start to notice. And oh, they definitely notice. And yeah. if you don't start to bring it back. Yeah, you just you've lost, you know, you've and lost them. Yeah, and this is where there's no doubt about it. Our amateurism totally shone through, right? Because that idea of trying to bring that back. So we, you know, we've done it in smaller places where you were doing it five minutes at a time, but to try and bring back the, like a fifty-minute show, yeah, you know, it's just that's it's hard, isn't it? That takes skill. Uh, even the monologue of the magician didn't work, but oh uh, <laughs> but it, this this was the night which I've, I've I've said this in my act a couple of times, and it is absolutely true. I think one of the other reasons. Uh, it was so bad that night is because there was so many just non-native English speakers and okay. they just didn't understand yeah. the word we were talking about. Yeah. And this became obvious to us when it got so bad, about 20 minutes in, I decided to just do off the cuff a knock-knock joke. Oh I didn't God. even have one planned. Oh, God. And I said to the guy in the front row, knock-knock, and I swear my life, he just turned around and looked at me and went, what is this knock? <laughs> Like that, and I was like, "All oh, right, okay." Oh. We're and obviously, that got the biggest laugh of the night. Oh God! And uh, the only laugh of the night. And but <laughs> there was a, there was at least like fifteen people there who were merchant seamen. We found out after. Oh yeah. They just come in. So just Again, going. thinking, "Oh, wacky scientists. This will be funny." <laughs> 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 you get two blokes in kimonos talking about Tony Hart. Oh God! I, I, I'm I'm, sur- I'm not surprised it didn't appeal to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was that was. But obviously, as you know, mate, learning experience. To have such a bleak evening was was quite good, really, in the scheme of things, mm. because it teaches you, doesn't it? It teaches you a bit of resolve and a bit of resilience. And it taught me never, and I've never, ever, ever, ever done it again to have too many drinks before a show. Never, ever, yeah. ever, ever. That makes a big difference. Huge apparently. difference. It's a huge. It's, it's a huge thing. I think. Uh, is, uh, how long were you doing comedy when you started to go? Well, when oh, we'd been doing it in dribs and drops for a few years because I'd, I'd gone to university in Edinburgh. Yeah. And it was the golden age of kind of the first wave of proper big stand-up comedy right? where every Friday night for like five quid you can go and see people who are household names now yeah. like Harry Hill and Al, uh, Al Murray, Al Murray pub landlord yeah. before he was the pub landlord he d- used to do an entire act where he would just mimic different forms of weaponry so he'd do an impression of the noise of a longbow and then an AK-47 oh, what? that was his act it was really weird I've, I've heard I've heard of things like obviously Al Murray the pub landlord like he I, I, it's Drummed up as this very silly. Yeah. Ve- he's, you know, maybe not the most smartest guy, but I've heard that he was, like, s- really tuned in. Oh, he's an incredibly he's like intelligent fellow. Incredibly fella. intelligent, yeah. Like, I, I think he got a first from Oxford or Cambridge and stuff, and he's, like, he's Mr. Hyper Intelligent. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, I remember the year, it must have been, it was either 94 or 95, I think it was 94, when he first started doing the pub landlord, because he was supporting Harry Hill. And it was the first time he was doing it. It was before he was going out doing it himself. Yeah. And uh, it was absolutely, the two of them, w- it was just, it was brilliant. I, th- I still think that was the best show I ever saw. That, that's that's a very, I think, p- if anyone if anyone is listening to this, <laughs> or does. They'll be flocking. There'll be flocking. a bloke from Denmark from a merchant <laughs> seaman going, what is <laughs> this <laughs> podcast? <laughs> that's what it'll be. Um, the, 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 the act like the, the pub landlord yeah. and like uh, Harry Hill, like, you don't, g- I don't know, I haven't seen, I don't know if there's still acts like that in the UK, but that that brand of comedy, of that kind of more of it's a, a theatrical act, and uh, uh, um, not like a set piece, but the, the, the more character yeah. stand-up comedy. It's definitely more of a, U- like a, a, a British oh, thing. Uh, Harry Hill, it's like proper music hall kind of tradition, yeah. that type of stuff, yeah. yeah. Less observational and more kind of wacky and yeah. anarchic and stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's a, I think there's a big tradition. I wouldn't I wouldn't know who's doing it now, but I'm, I'm sure it's still I I Yeah, I'm I sure d- it still is. Like, I, I don't see too many people doing it now. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't see anyone doing it now. You like it but of course, that that went mainstream as well, didn't it? Cause like Harry Hill ended up on ITV for like ten years and yeah, stuff. So yeah, yeah, All that stuff just became it was there was not nothing alternative about it. It was family. It was it was just it was, was, it was family. Nice. It became more family entertainment. Yeah. That's why it's like the pub landlord is. It seems like it's just going to be like family entertainment. Yeah, that's not family entertainment. And that's <laughs> like, yeah, you go. Oh God! All right, no, no, that's something completely different. No, um, but but they they used to come along and there was like open mic slots after them and everything. So it was good because you know, technically you can say, oh, we're on the same bill as uh, Stuart Lee and all this yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, which in 
still sounds great when you say it until you actually go into the actual truth of what it was. Sounds you know great when I mean? you say it. I've mentioned Stuart Lee's yeah. name to a few people here and they're like, yeah. I've heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> but th- but they, they were, like, it, it was it was absolutely brilliant. And I think there was a few universities on the circuit and we were just lucky enough that obviously Edinburgh being Edinburgh was one of them. Because it would be every week. And if it wasn't those, it was people who were massive at the time, maybe not quite so famous now, but like Jeff Green and Mark Thomas and mm. Jenny Eclair. And these people were just complete regulars, like every week, yeah. every week for buttons. It uh, was great. And were you, are you, like, in terms of like the open mic scene there, what was it like? Was there, was there as many spots? Was it like just a- you go on after those shows? Oh yeah, so you 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 would never go on before. They'd oh yeah, it, it yeah. wouldn't be like that. So they'd have they'd have all the headliners on, but then they'd basically open it up for like amateurs. You know what oh I mean? Oh, that's that's yeah. And because it was at university, it was a, a relatively friendly. Crowd, so you know what I mean. Was this in in the university? This, this, I would, uh, yeah. This the, the the ones I was doing was all like university gigs. I wasn't doing like a, a Scotland circuit or anything. Like right. That. Okay. Uh, but it was great because it was still plenty of people there. Yeah. The trouble is, of course, because you're going on later on. It did tend to be absolutely wrecked people. Yeah. So uh, again, that's it's a mix and match, isn't it? Yeah. You know it's I mean? a rough place to start. Sometimes out. it's all right, but yeah. I mean, it's not like it's not like any horror shows like you hear about people going to Glasgow Empire or anything like that. No. You know? No. There was there was no one throwing things at you or nothing. <laughs> I've but yet, to, it I've was yet to have someone throw out something at me yet. I don't think it would happen in New Zealand, mate. No, it'd be, t- t- y- it'd it'd be it tough, wouldn't it? It'd be I tough. think it would be unlikely. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think we're more likely to throw something at them than, than to throw something at us. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so, mate. But, uh, but it, and it went from there. So because of that, y- you know, you, you end up knowing a couple of people. And you th- I do other things like you had a little radio show at one point and stuff like in the middle of the 90s. And uh, all sorts of little weird and wonderful bits. Hmm. But nothing, like... There's no career plan, no nothing like that. It was yeah. just something I always want. I did always want to do it from being a kid. And uh, yeah, so that, that kind of brings me on to the next thing I wanted to talk to you. So you you, you always wanted to do yeah. do stand up. You did. You were doing it, and you you entered into the fringe. You I won did. an award. I did. And then went. Yeah, pretty much sacked it off. Fuck, yeah. fuck that. And then you've taken it up. What twenty years? More or less twenty years later. Yeah. 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 So was it a hard decision to make, or was it just? Well, yes and no. So again, it's like an, it's an aging stage thing. So I was approaching thir- I wasn't quite thirty, but I was approaching thirty. I was getting married, and it's one of these things where you do realise that it would be lovely to pursue your dreams. Yeah. But because it had gone so well, it was like an easier decision to make. You know what I mean? There wasn't like an y- you weren't going. Ah, oh, if only we'd just done X, then it would have been even better. Do you feel like because you did because you we went did it? It was really good. Yeah, you did it. And we had a great it. time. You went well fantastic. Take take the award out of it. Man. I mean, the, the the thing that was the achievement was going and doing it and having a good time. That yeah. was it. And yeah. and having really successful nights. That was the thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's far more rewarding, isn't it? Because like uh, genuinely, mate, everything else was just luck, honest. But it was just. Seeing proper strangers having a proper howl at your material that yeah. you crafted over like a, a six month period, there's nothing better, man. It's just it's yeah. like it's like that now, isn't it? So that was the big thing. So that made it easier. But like, it, and, uh, and there was no ultimatums or anything. But it was just it was obvious. And and my mate could definitely not do it. I mean, this was definitely like the the one throw of the dice for him. Okay. So I just thought, well, what are we going to do here? Uh, really, let's be a grown up. And then, uh, of course, y- I'm stupid, really, because you're limited by your own imagination, aren't you? And you don't ever realise. Well, you can be a grown-up, but you can still do all this stuff as well. Yeah. That just never occurred to me. You like, never genuinely never yeah. occurred to me. Yeah. And then after a few more years after that, it becomes one of these things where you get a little embarrassed to even discuss it with people. Because if you tell people, you know what it's like. You tell anyone you do stand-up, there's a weight of expectation on your shoulders. And so if you said, and I did Edinburgh, and I would never even... I mean, I didn't tell you for over a year, did I? I think I, I think I think I might have mentioned that I'd done the fringe, but I didn't. I didn't mention that it'd gone really well. No, anything. you'd mentioned it to me that you'd done Edinburgh yeah. in the green room before I was going up. Uh, I, I know. I think I'd just gone up, and you went, "Oh yeah, like this is great. Like I used to do the fringe and all that." And yeah. I was like, "Oh yeah, thanks." I was, I, I oh, sorry, no, mate. No, no. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, I hope I didn't break that code of conduct we all saw <laughs> from Jerome the other day. No. I hope it was. I kept it a safe space, mate. I didn't. I, d- I don't. <laughs> never read those things. Oh, it's good. Good read. Is it? Yeah, it's got ten pages. Fuck that. It's a good read. I just I just I stay out the green room. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for the graphic novel version. That would be good. <laughs> um. But no, but uh, and so so that was like that ma- made it easier. And then like over the years, you just get used to not doing it, don't you? And then you have children, and then everything else, and then you come here. And the the big thing that made it all different last year was your friend and mine, Carrie, who went to Neil's comedy school. Oh, that was it. Because so you, because I thought you were, uh, like. I think we must have came on the scene around the same time. Would oh, it been I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I thought you'd been doing it for ages, and I just thought you just didn't tr- come out that much. 
No, no, because no. Because I remember no. seeing you, and you was like, uh, you got up on stage. I was like, this dude's really good. Like, I think <sighs> I remember, I remember the first time seeing you going, oh no, this guy's got like, you had what I struggled to have was actual jokes. Um, <laughs> 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 we all struggle with that at one. the start. <laughs> But you, you had such an ease on stage. I was like, oh, this guy's done, he's been doing this for a while. And then you said you'd been at uh, the Fringe in Edinburgh. I was like, oh, like you've got some. No. some, jo- but, some jo- but it, it, it seems to. Well, uh, what, so what do you do now? Well, I, uh, I, uh, I work at the university, mate. Oh, okay. So I, I do a lot of public speaking. You do a lot so of public yeah, speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Th- being in front of people and being in front of people who might even be half and half, whether they're not going to like you. That is something I am mercifully totally used to. Yeah. Like totally used to. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I think that that because I was I was just wondering how you kept yeah. the 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 kind of the presence. Oh no, it's that's and, and that's the, 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 the I've never st- I've never stopped performing in that sense. You know what yeah. I mean? Never. Yeah. Although it's not like a comedy performance I would do mm-hmm. at work, but mm-hmm. you are you just used to being and it's you're used to kind of singling out people and talking to groups and all that kind of thing. It's very helpful. Though. It's very helpful. You're fantastic at that. Like that's oh, why you. W- when you MC, it's like the the I never feel like you're going in to do crowd work. You're just very natural with the way you um approach uh, uh, approach the gig and approach the night. It's um well yeah. It's just talking to people, and I I I feel I've always felt I don't think it's easier or anything like that, but I always feel way less pressure, way less pressure doing the MC. I was yeah I was gonna say it's that it's you you seem much so more, much more relaxed. Yeah, you seem I, I so feel much more relaxed. relaxed. Because you're not trying to think of which joke's going to go where and what's coming going next. You know that it can be more fragmented because you've got more bites at the cherry. Yeah. And you know that you can talk to people and have a chat. So n- even if things don't land, you just open it up to a conversation. And, mm. and because I don't find that especially difficult, then I'm, I feel I just feel really comfortable. And then, of course, you can do all the... And it, you, you've noticed, like I said earlier on, the original dream was to be like a, a faded club comic. That's where the introductions <laughs> come from, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's the introduction. That's what you get. Before we have the bingo, let's give a big hand. And that's what you well get. And that's the kind of the, that's the influence for that. It's night. hilarious. Oh, no, really can I remember when you first came out? And you, I think the first time you introduced me up in the Welsh Dragon. And we were all, like, I remember everyone was like, Michael was a- absolutely murdered it as the MC. Because it's, it's, it's funny. Cause we know what you're, but by the, th- the second or third introduction, yeah. everybody's on board. And it's hila- like it's really funny because you've got that kind of the old comic vibe, but you've got a really, really um, sensible way of dealing with the crowd and, and an intelligent way of delivering jokes. That's very, very, very kind of you, mate. Thanks. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I but sit back and watch it. So I'm like, I'm like, like uh, people like you when you're on stage. You know, you're instantly likable, even if you do your more darker stuff. People still will give you a o- will give you a long, long, the long leash. To those go, those to assless go. trousers go a long way, mate. You wear <laughs> a pair of them, people instantly like you. Um, but uh, I, I listen, I, 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 it's just I do I, I really I really enjoy that side of it. I do, but it's just nice when you see it all gelled on you. Like when when we had our we had a great open mic last week with Paolo, yeah, and just everything worked, didn't it? And I think there's that combination of everyone was chuffed stiff to be out. Yeah, there was a, a benevolent crowd to start yeah. off with. Everyone was on cracking form. Yeah, there's loads of people were doing loads of new stuff. Yeah, and uh, and you know, d- d- new stuff can be a bit kind of dodgy sometimes because you're not used to delivering all the rest of it. But it just when you have nights like that again, it's like one of those nights. Like it just you just chuff stiff. Everything works and everyone's yeah. happy and uh, it's everything just works, doesn't it? It's just it's a beautiful feeling. I did not have that much fun that night. <laughs> I thought you were great, mate. Honestly, I, I thought really you were fantastic. Ever, yeah, no, I I. I thought it was a great night, but I was um, didn't feel very, very, very comfortable comfortable on stage. Um, well, you did well, mate. I didn't. I I, it, I felt it came off a little bit too. Um, I I didn't. Enjo- I, I had fun, but I didn't really enjoy it. If you know ah. what I mean. I knew things were landing, but it felt a little bit too peak drop, peak drop, peak drop, well, and it wasn't. I wasn't helped by the the guy um, who kept talking yeah, the whole Luke. way through. Yeah. See that. Uh, see that was bad MC in my by my on my part. I should have. I should have been more. Uh, I think assertive, but everyone. He was making me laugh with it because his his heckles were just stupid, weren't they? they, they were, Outrageous were, fortune. What did he shout that for? He was just. I don't know. He was having a conversation with the comic. Yeah. I, he was. Be, he's like. I, I think we all know that person. We've seen them. They're drunk. 
that they want to be part of the show. Yeah. They're supportive with their heckles. He thinks he's helping. Yeah, and then he yeah. s- he gives you a high five after you get off the stage. I yeah. was about to slap him in the head. I was like, don't d- don't try and shake my hand. That wasn't... I, th- I think he definitely thought he was helping, and he definitely wasn't. But I will say, mate, you know, I think one of the biggest laughs of the night was your little comeback with him and everything. Everyone loved it. Everyone but loved it, mate. I think I think after a while... Well, see, I think that after a while, people will just get sick of it. Because yeah. it's... I think you can get people who shout out during during the night, and that's fine. I think every now and again, yeah, fair enough, you've got a, a, a loud crowd member. But I think the longer they're allowed to get away with it, they think they're part of the show. Yeah. You know? And then they're like, oh, well, you know. Yeah, well, that, that is that is my fault. Isn't it? So I, I was a terrible MC after all. But no. I, I, I don't even think, hec- I mean, some the, the occasional heckle can work. The occasional heckle can break a bit of tension. And, and sometimes when people are rubbish at heckling, it gives it's you like better, it's yeah. fantastic, isn't it? Because yeah. I mean, fa- you heckle back, don't you? Because boo, yeah. what a bad heckle! Yeah, I, I <laughs> 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 last heckle properly. Last, boo. last night, um, I tr- I picked <coughs> up on something that the crowd, uh, one guy in the crowd said he was a fisheries offi- officer, and he said he was a Power Ranger. Yeah, right. And I was like, oh fuck! And the MC like didn't glossed over, and I was like, oh, he's missed a the trick there. This guy said he's a Power Ranger. Yeah. And I was like, are you a fisheries officer? He's like, yeah, a Power Ranger. He's like, yeah. And I was like, to the audience, Power Ranger. And they went, no. <laughs> 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 they were like, no. I was, I was like, fuck you then. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'd, I'd have Absol- laughed if I'd have been there. Absolutely man. nothing. I was like, well, fair enough then. I'd, I'd have laughed if I'd have been there. Yeah, well, you could have done with you last night because I thought that was hel- I think I, I, I find it hilarious that they're the fisheries are they're called Power Rangers. Yeah. Because they go for power. What does he morph into? That's the big yeah, question. See, here. yeah, no, no, no. That joke went. Mighty Morph in Tarahiki. It, it'd that, be that, great. That's that's what happens when you've, you've an experienced MC. He knew. He heard that. He heard power anyway. Yeah. No, I'm not touching that. No, I'm that's not that touching that. Professionalism. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that that is that that that. I learned a lesson last night. Yeah, and if it doesn't, pi- it <laughs> the MC doesn't pick it up. Don't think you're smarter yeah. than the professional <laughs> comic. <laughs> and I go, do you know what? I think you missed the trick there, buddy. <laughs> Went up and fucking ate shit straight away. It's the first, the first, the first yeah. joke came out my mouth. And we I live and learn, mate. And I was, and the worst thing is, it was the last one on. And it, even if it's an open mic, doesn't matter what happens. If you're the last person on, people expect you to be really good. They do expect the bang at the and end. And you're yeah. like, oh, I'm just working out some new stuff tonight. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to be on last. And I'm, uh, you're not headlining. You're not fucking open mic. It's just. You know, yeah, just look at the draw, innit? You just look at the draw, and you're like, oh, I've just got, w- I, I've <laughs> I brought these earlier on. And we'd be yeah. like, oh, you get a good laugh with the star because they're excited. Because they're like, here's the really good guy. But and then you do the Power Ranger material. Yeah, and, and just then they're like, desperate. Fuck. I was like, yeah, like, oh, la- Last week, last week, I, I honestly, uh, it was just after, it was it just before you or just after you? And someone had said something in the act. And it was about a pension plan. And I made a joke about Kathleen getting me a new pension plan being a raft, which I thought was hilarious. And I thought, ha, ha, because I'll be like at sea by myself. I, I, I remember that. I, la- and I, was, I was just doing myself. Silence. Silence, man. yeah. And yeah. it just makes you think, in that moment when you think you're being really witty, sometimes you are, sometimes, sometimes you're not. not but I, I, I <laughs> think it, 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 <laughs> it pulls to like, when you're listening to someone's material, because you're a comic, you, you can sometimes fish out a line. Oh, of course you do. You, you fish out it. a line. That if especially if it's going to be the MC, especially when you like the person who's yeah. on as well, you know what I mean? Because you want to kind of almost join in. You like Luke, you want to help. Yeah. <laughs> but if the, you're the crowd, I think sometimes they they don't they only hear they they'll miss that. Yeah. Because that was only a setup to another bit, and once they've heard the setup, that's gone. But we kind of latch on to everything. Yeah. They, they, uh, y- I guess you probably only remember the very last joke or two that someone tells. So if you come on with an unprecedented callback yeah. or something from yeah. the top of the set, yeah. they're, they're like, what are, are you talking, talking about? about? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I think that's what happened to me. No, no it wasn't. It, just, it was a shit joke, and that's what really what happened. <laughs> You've got to give it a go with Power Rangers, mate. You did the right thing. I think, I, yeah, I think it's like I can't let that sit there, you yeah. know. And I, I was confident enough that even if that doesn't land, I was like, I, I've, I can bring it back. And like I, di- <laughs> I, 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 I did. Um, but then, like, I had some a good, a good solid four minutes, and then the last two were meh. It's all right, yeah. but um, yeah, I was um, I had a, it was a fu- it was a fun night last night. It was a fun night last night. Um, I think I think it's going to be a lot of fun nights for the next few weeks, at least, at least while everyone's just getting back in the zone of being happy and out and just enjoying themselves. It's a nice 
time, isn't it? It's a nice time for us it all is, to be it's out it's together. It's it great. It most of the shows we've been, I've done, have been packed. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Long may that continue. Yeah, I think. I think it's. It's like we were talking about earlier. It's great to see comedy in something like a, a good packed happy room. Of course it is. You know, um, I've noticed the like the difference between doing an you know an open mic and 10, 10, 15 people to like forty people who paid. Yeah. Oh, want to be there? Um, big difference. It's a big, big difference. Huge. Um, so, in sort of after the lockdown, and now we're back on stage. Like, in what are you looking to do, kind of this? The rest of this year, well, or, or early I've next year, uh, have you got any plans? As I have been for the last several decades of my life, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily the most ambitious person in the world, <laughs> or strategic in terms of what they might do. If I can just keep plugging away, getting gigs, uh, I'd, I'd love to start doing more up and down the country. That's yeah. what I'd love to do. I think a squad of us should go up to Auckland and do a couple of nights up there. I think that'll be great. Yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm heading to Palmerstown. Uh, yeah, I saw that on Thursday. Thursday. It's fantastic, man. That's because uh, I've heard that's a good night as well. I've heard it's a good night. Yeah. Um, I think uh, with a couple of the guys came down last week, um, and and I think it's gonna it's good to see a little bit of back and forth between the you know the the two yeah. places. It's only two hours away, so um, I'm gonna go up there check it out. I know they've they've sold out some pretty decent shows. Fantastic. So like it would be nice to. To start doing some stuff up there. Yeah, that that'll be good. And uh, and the other thing, like the longer term plan, is definitely do a fringe show next year. I definitely want to do uh, yeah. a fringe show. I've even got the title of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's another surreal one. It's a uh, vegetable apocalypse, <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm we're gonna have fake reviews, like five star reviews from Butchers Weekly, <laughs> and then one star <laughs> review from Farmers Union, things like that. <laughs> I've got absolutely no material. You're abs- <laughs> the zero. Like I haven't, abs- got a, I haven't got a single joke about a courgette or anything. Absolutely. So, so d- d- okay. So y- you've. I thought just think it'll work. It'll work. It'll yeah. Work, I yeah. All you gotta do is get them there, and then they're stuck there. Because the p- the poster is gonna be like a leek and a courgette and a carrot in a triangle with the the kind of the eye, the Illuminati <laughs> eye in the middle of it. Yeah. That's what it's gonna be. Okay. And any d- just d- so so where did this come from? I just honestly, I, I thought of it one day and I burst out laughing at myself. I thought that would be great. Uh, that would be great. Yeah, that, that was it. That'll I do. don't need any more than that. Are yeah. you going to do an hour? Are you going to do half well, an hour? Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we're doing it with Carrie because so do we'll half an hour each, and then uh, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah. But we'll uh, we'll we'll just see. But I hope so. It's yeah, but I know I would. Uh, I definitely want to do a longer form show. I just want to keep gigging it. It's just it's a beautiful thing to be able to do, man. And we're it's dead lucky. And it's we're, we're really lucky, aren't we? That Wellington yeah. is such a welcoming, like friendly and and warm place to be if you want to do stand up if you want to do stand up it's 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 i think it's really good i think you can you can it doesn't take too long to get um i won't say established but to get to to be known around the kind of the community where you get booked on you get booked on a lot more gigs and you speak for yourself you're the one (laughs) you're the one with all the bookings i've got about about three in the next six months i fucking hound everyone (laughs) i don't get i I don't think i've been asked to do any of the gigs i've been booked on i just Hound people. I'm still better than the old publicist we had in Edinburgh, but I'm I'm nowhere near as uh, as good as you, mate. But uh, uh, d- d- yeah, well, you see, I'm 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 getting booked. I'm I'm booking myself basically. Yeah, well, that's really what you, you know, need to do. I, I respect. Booki- that. I'm booking myself. Um, uh, well, well, like to me, it's like I always wanted to do stand up, and now I'm finally doing it. Yeah, and I have a job where I can, I can do late nights. And I can be out a couple of times a week because I'm literally in the centre of town. Yeah. So it it all makes sense to do it here, you know. No, uh, absolutely. At the moment, of course it does. And and, uh, and because, like you say, you know, that there are so many nights available now, and particularly now people want to be back out and everything. You know, it might get a little bit quieter again at the end of the year, but I don't think it will. It's just the perfect time, man. Yeah. You're brilliant. Everyone loves you. It's great. I'm getting there. I'm it's a great, there. great time to be alive, man. <laughs> <laughs> well in the middle yeah. of a pandemic, we're lucky. <laughs> we're lucky. I, I mean, like, I'm still surprised, or, or or in awe when I when I speak, you know, talk to my parents back home, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're still in lockdown." I was oh, like, it's horrendous. You're like, what? <laughs> no, oh. no, we beat it. <laughs> and they're like, "No, you made here." I was like, "Oh, I th- definitely last week." I don't know if it's shifted in the next last few days, but as of last Thursday, Middlesbrough, where I'm from, is still the like the epicenter of the worst of the cases and the deaths. And there's there's been there's been a few people I know sadly, yeah. Um, 
member in the family and things. So it, it, like genuinely, it's horrendous. It's genuinely, that's, that's this this is no way to end a uh, podcast about no, comedy. No, I think that's, that's <laughs> you, got, you know, we get one guest on yeah. and then no one listens to it again. Well, and that'll be all right, yeah. I, I <laughs> okay, so I, 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 we, we'll start to kind of wrap up, but um, I want to ask you a couple of things about Middlesbrough. Oh, yeah, sure. Do you, gr- you, gr- you grew up there, yeah? Teesside, yeah. I'm actually from a town called Thornaby, yeah. Okay. So, so just outside. I've only met one person from Middlesbrough and they just told me Middlesbrough's rough as fuck. Yes. Like it's ri- like how how bad is it? Well, uh, it's mate, it's 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 just. Uh, that's a very 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 broad question. I I understand. That's the a bit of so a fucking so the, these thi- these things are all relative, aren't they? Right. So there's yeah. no there's no absolute roughness, and there's loads of the UK that's rough, and there's plenty of places I've been in the UK where I felt more nervy than I've been in Middlesbrough. Yeah. But I know most of my mates who've been to stay with me over the years have felt more nervous in Teesside than they have in other places. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, it, it I is. I suppose, I, I don't mean the question, like how rough is it? It's a very broad question. And like, in terms of like, growing up there, and, you well, know, I, I've grown, like, where I'm from, like in Ireland, like, it's, it's, it's in, in Carlo, it's not exactly, yeah, uh, rough, but it's, there are some areas that are kind of rough. Now, I've got this impression that Middlesbrough is quite of a, uh, ne- not a forgotten city, but like it's just it's a little bit. Yeah, well, it's it's it, it, so uh, when I was growing up in the eighties, it's late seventies, but definitely all through the eighties, Middlesbrough and Teesside generally was more than most areas, as apart from maybe the mining villages that were all getting closed down as well. This was the one that was like suffering with deindustrialization, yeah, everything, yeah. massive unemployment, big crime. And it's just, it is what it is, man. It's like an old traditional working class area. It's, it's like parts yeah. of Glasgow and parts yeah. of Newcastle yeah. and parts of Wales. Yeah. And when all that goes, you've, you, you've got trouble, haven't you? So I, mean, I am lucky. I had a really nice upbringing. My mum and dad were very lived in a little bungalow in Thornaby. Yeah, yeah. The school I went to was all right. The school next door to me got burned down three <laughs> times. Uh, it, it hasn't been burned down since they pulled it, uh, pulled it down. It's never been burned down subsequently <laughs> since it turned into houses. I think I think when I ask the question, how rough is Middlesbrough? You should yeah. you should have answered. Well, you know, the school beside me was burned down. The dean three was times. yeah. The dean the dean was burned down three times, and then they just went, oh, that's enough. <laughs> We're not going to read. Yeah, that that's it. the dean. That was that's a stand in the stadium. No, no, it's just the, just the name of the school. I, I don't know what it was named after. I don't know why, because I, I I used to well, I used to wa- love Middlesbrough in the Premiership. Oh, when good they were lad. Really Oh, because just good lad. D- they used to buy outrageous players. We did. Jorginho, Janino, Ravinelli, Ra- Ravinelli, and yeah. then you you, spe- you spaffed a load of money on that Dutch forward. Yeah, well, he's Alfo- ba- Alfonso Brazilian, Alves. but from uh, but he was from uh, from the Dutch Do- league. Was he Eindhoven? I think Eindhoven. Him, Alfonso yeah. Alves, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he, he did all right for the first few games, but then, the his, then his major season was just disastrous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I I disastrous. I, I love the, the like the romance of. Janino in we're, s- in we're still doing it now so only a few years ago we had Martin Braithwaite playing for us and, and we spent a record amount of money on him and yeah. he didn't do anything for Middlesbrough yeah. bless him I'm not blaming him but you know I don't think he was that bothered and then now he's at Barcelona, he's at Barcelona. what are you going to do? Barcelona have have um, um, p- form for picking out players from absolutely no like did they, did they sign Kevin Brintz Boateng? They did, yeah, yeah. As and an emergency cover striker. Uh, just, just for the same just reason. Yeah, yeah. Exa- it's, it's, it's. I, don't, I wonder what their scouts are doing hanging out in Middlesbrough. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I dread to think, mate. <laughs> but I will say this: true story. When I went to Barcelona, I came back and I thought oh, that's rougher than Middlesbrough. <laughs> now it it looks nicer, <laughs> honestly. Okay. Honestly, it looks nicer. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's got the architecture, everything yeah. else. But you, I don't know if you've ever been. You go down Las Ramblas at night time, and yeah. you are honestly you're getting pickpocketed. People are trying to hit you. People are trying to give you drugs constantly. Yeah. It's just it's 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 a crazy place. Man. But that's that's sort of tourist the tour the tourism. Yeah, you know. I suppose. But, but if you if you had that in Middlesbrough Town Centre, y- it would be on the front page of the Daily Mail yeah. every week. <laughs> it would, honestly, because it's in Barcelona. Everyone goes, oh, that's yeah, so I cafe uh, culture. Yeah, well, uh, that's I think the, the thing about being rough, like you can. The way you describe Middlesbrough, I know I'll probably feel at home I'm around I'm sure there. you would, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, you go, it's rough. And I think, ah, no, it's going Yeah, it's like, when I, when you see, well, let you I pick one of the pubs. You pick, yeah. you, you go into there and you, you have all the lads. One guy is an arm missing. And it's been wor- yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know there's yeah. always, you always one of those pubs when there's like the regulars and there's always one dude with something missing on him. Either it's in his head or his body, and he, he you go. I'm sitting here for the day and listening to see what kicks off. Here. Honestly, I was walking. I was having a walk on Cuba Street earlier on today, and I walked past. I forget the name of the road, but you know that the the pub that's uh, the Fortune Favors pub, where it has his own brewery. 
just where the car park is. So you just go off. Yes. Top of yeah, 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 yeah. And I walked past there, and there were these three old fellas in, sat completely individually, miles away from each other. Clearly, been there all morning. Mm. And I was thinking, a lot of people would look at that and think, what, what a tableau of despair and loneliness. Oh yeah, I look at. And I was thinking, oh shit, there's me. Oh yeah, yeah. No I one's, no one's hassling them. I They've I obviously got enough money to have a couple of beers. A couple of beers. What a lovely afternoon. The day you see, you see a couple of old boys having yeah. a few beers. You go, go, go on. Good on you. Just, I'll, d- I'll tell you one final thing before we finish. Cause yeah. It relates oh back. Okay, okay. You, you're fine. You, you, are you, you calling an end to it then? Oh no, no. Well, <laughs> I just, I, you said we were wrapping up. Earlier. No, no. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. So yeah, go on. Uh, one of the, one of the l- weird kind of things that happened after Edinburgh was we got our photo in the paper, right? So we had a local paper called the Evening Gazette. And they took a photo of us, little story, it was all very nice. And then, unbeknownst to us, there's like the free newspaper, so like the Capital Observer or the Wellington Obs, whatever it is, the free one that no one ever reads. Yeah. That had a, another version of the story in that was literally maybe a line long, and they had like a passport sized photo of the both of us, right? <laughs> I didn't even know it was there until me and, me and my mate, we went to have a pint in the Golden Eagle, which is in Thornaby, which is an old kind of like 1960s hotel. Yeah. When they hilariously thought that Thornaby would, for some reason, attract tourists. <laughs> it never did, right? For many reasons I can go into. But it's still there, bless it. And they still have this bar, and it is, it, it can be a bit dubious. Yeah. Anyway, we were in there, ordered a pint, and there was a, a little old bloke at the end of the bar, and he started going, yeah, <laughs> you think you two were clever? <laughs> and we were <laughs> looking around going, is he talking to us? Hey, yeah, yeah, you think you're clever? Because you got your photo, you got your photo in there other post. And we were going, what on earth are you talking about? And he had, the, he had the free paper with him. And he went, look, it's you. Yeah. You think you're clever. And I was thinking, why has he read that story? <laughs> and how did he recognise us? <laughs> and it was the one and only person who ever, like, ever, ever discussed the show with us. Ever. Oh, fantastic. Do you Just think you're clever? Oh, he didn't like it at all. Yeah. He, <laughs> thought, he thought we were bringing <laughs> shame to Thornaby by being in the Herald and Post oh. and boasting about our achievements. <laughs> Yeah, honest. He was. He was very. That'll angry. bring you back down to earth. Wouldn't he was it? an angry yeah. man. Yeah, I That'll don't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame him. He maybe he's, he, he's the one who saw the show on Thursday and walked out. Yeah, he was <laughs> probably the. Bl- he was probably pretending to be like a Danish seaman or something. <laughs> I'll just just mentioned amputees. I will give you one final story. This is from when I lived in Edinburgh. Me and my mate Tommy had had a big night out one night, and uh, I just kind of disappeared and I mooched off. I, I don't know what I was doing really, and I, I don't really remember what I was doing, but. I remember getting home and it was pouring down with rain and I only had one shoe on. <laughs> and my other foot was like, I had like trench foot. And <laughs> everyone's going, where's your shoe? And I said, like, I honestly, I do not know. I do not know where my shoe is. And about three days later, there was a guy with one leg who used to sit outside <laughs> the Odeon Cinema. <laughs> and we walked past him and he had on my shoe. <laughs> I never felt never felt proud. I didn't go. I didn't make a fuss. But true story, mate. Maybe I think I think I think you were probably in your you know your drunken stupor. Like I need to do something good for this guy. I I, I actually hope he mugged me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he nicked my shoe. <laughs> but I honestly I can't remember unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a fucking fantastic place <laughs> to end the show. And I think you might have found your next bit to try out on stage tomorrow night. Yeah, let's let's have a go. Eh? Okay, Michael. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shannon. Much. And happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, it's my birthday today. Uh,